I found a guy in Clarkston, Michigan. His name is Mitch. He has a small business and he sells the New Country Organics feed by the bag. So I get to support like the best feed company where they have organic soy free feed. I get to support them as well as support a small business locally, a guy who's pretty awake. I was talking to him about all this stuff and he knows. So he's preparing, he's getting ready, keeping me going. And now I can get it by the bag so I don't have to spend a whole chunk all at once. I can get it as I need it this way. A few different kinds here. There's a poultry starter. He gave me a deal, it was on sale and I got it by the weight. That's how I look at it. And I cut it with their feed now and that's just fine. They love it all the same, my chickens. So poultry layer feed, 50 pounds, 50 pounds, 50 pounds. Bunch of 50s there. Here's some poultry starter and then some duck grower. So that's going for the ducks. And that's amazing. It's got some probiotics in it for them. So it's healthier for them. Look at these potatoes here, how they're growing into this tomato cage. This one kind of fell. It's not doing too hot. I don't know what's happening there. But the rest of these are actually doing pretty dang good. And they're starting to come up even over here. And there and then I got to put cages around the rest of these that don't have them yet I got to grab the cages from outside they're around the tomatoes which are pretty much dead now and here 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 in each of these pots there's a lot of rabbit manure and even a few dead animals that died here on the farm little ones and they go in there and they're gonna break down and make the potatoes everything that they're going to be and it's regenerative and it lets the little babies go back to nature in the most holistic way the wood stove is going to get roaring this year soon real soon look at this pepper bell pepper what kind is it i don't even know but look at it it's gnarly and rugged and so nutritious i'm going to eat this later cook it up probably fry it up with squash i got my winter squash that i'm cutting up in frying up I'm peeling them peeling them with a peeler and then I'm cutting them up and frying them with potatoes and all the peppers hot peppers many things everything it's all from the garden avocado tree see the leaves here they'll do this where they'll shrivel up time and again they'll uh, wrinkle back some of the older leaves and new ones will come and grow in like this and I'm eating these these young leaves the avocado tree even these older green ones I will cook them in my dishes and I'll eat them even on sandwiches sometimes these aloe vera in the grow room this winter here let's look I got this grow out section that I built for the chickens the roosters and they're downstairs in one of my grow tents right now I moved them down there they like it in there that's fine for them in there right now I'm going to be building an indoor duck operation call me crazy I know I'm going to customize wooden frame a lot like the rabbit hutches I'm building and underneath it will be a rollout with a tarp to capture their manure into a couple bigger bins is what I'm thinking just two of them but they'll be bigger and longer. It'll be easy clean out. I'll be able to even get in there with a hose and spray it off. That's the whole idea. It'll be neat, it'll be functional, fully operational. Over here too, I'm gonna build a splash area with a water filter in it even to keep their water filtered and I'll be able to keep filling it back up with a hose if they splash it out a little bit. You know, I got the pond liner on the floor, the lights, I'll even grow plants in here. Things. What things? I don't know. Certain stuff, I'll grow it around the caged area and let the ducks have some plants as part of their habitat and stuff that's growing for me for food. So that'll be an amazing thing. I gotta get chicken wire, another big roll of that. I'm figuring that'll be the wall of the caged area and that will be good I'll get some wood perhaps in there to act as like a splash guard and behind the sheet of board 
I could have a sheet of plastic to even act more of protection to keep water from splashing onto the walls as much as possible and give them their splash spot and then they'll be able to work their way so it'll be off the ground something like this it'll be at my chest height and that'll be easier for me to clean underneath it when the tarps there rolling down to the tub and lights it'll be really cool and custom and clean i got this ultimate goal of having this really tidy neat fully functional many systems working together in harmony holistically and it just continuously expanding my creativity conceptualizing these things and pulling them out and making them a reality thinking hens in here and have an egg laying operation keeping a drake out of here so that the eggs don't get fertilized and maybe six eight hens or ten even in a section in here how cool would that be you know anybody else doing that nope. i don't nobody else crazy enough i gotta get a good air filter and that'll be fine man the animals are just beautiful and lovely to be around i don't care what anybody says oh you can't have them inside this that the other reason quit making excuses and living in a false paradigm this is how we've always done things all throughout human history as agrarian types of people we've lived with our animals with our people with our community all in conjunction this way i'm sure we're just not told and taught rediscovering ways of living and lifestyle choices that are lost on us purposefully like hidden in the vatican funny I used my wall trellises as the lids for my new hutches it's really really uh, efficient convenient I like these lids this is nice I'm gonna have to make new wall trellises at some point one day I'll get to some land and I'll have a big homestead there with acres and stuff right now I'm in a rental I have to make that rent payment monthly I've gotten myself down to having like three bills in life which one is the rent another is my electric the other is feed costs for the dogs and for the other animals the chickens rabbits ducks those expenses right there are enough that's a lot to maintain it's these expenses in life these reoccurring bills in life the ones that are inflating and you're not so much making more fiat but everything that reoccurs weekly or monthly mainly and weekly with the food that most people have to buy their food that's a whole nother and then there's the phone bill the internet bills the insurance the gasoline all those a lot of those i don't have anymore i got rid of and found ways around because they hit you and hit you and hit you and it's a reoccurring right it's a never-ending thing it's like the never-ending story that's the tax man getting you till you're dead you're born you pay taxes you die ah! but why does life have to be like that what if i could build regenerative systems and have them produce shelter water food community with security the essentials and not have to be indebted or a slave to or have to owe somebody currency a fiat of their creation which in turn completely enslaves me always having to have to have a way of bringing in those fiats so I can pay these bills we're all on this adventure it's gonna be wild there's so much to do so I'm in a rental you know it's okay because we all start somewhere and you start here in America if you're lucky enough the land of opportunity the American dream it's real because we have the access to resources <laughs> whereas third world countries if you're born into that kind of poverty you don't even have access to the water with the water in the seeds you can create that thousand to one return in abundance with nature just with your bare hands it's like the big secret that we're not told or taught in school right <clears throat> building here on this 
plot. I can learn and do all the things and regenerate the land and have all the animals, have the systems in play, in place. And I can uproot at any time. In a week's time, I could have everything out, even in a few days, mainly everything out. And when I do leave, I'll be taking all the things, all the pieces and materials that I've used here and built things out of, all the animal housing. All that will get pulled right out the ground when I get off to some land at some point. But until then, I'm going to do everything I ever wanted to do. I'm going to do it here. There's a few animals that I won't be able to get like cows and pigs and sheep and goats and bison. Well, uh, oh yeah, you heard me. Bison. You know what I was thinking too? My dogs are like a wolf pack. I got four of them. And when I do get land, I want to get another dog, a male, but I want to get a wolf. And I want to introduce him to my girls that I have now, my big dogs. They're labs. Onyx is one of my dogs that's a pit and continue with their genetic lineage and uh, let them have offspring and uh, convert them back to wild, back to nature, like a half wolf, half something else. And then I would think that would be considered legal. Figure out how all that works to keep it legal and legitimate within the confines of my enslavement so um what next guys <laughs> the pond work on that seal one last time that video I made a couple months ago or a month ago it's when i stopped so many big projects to work on all at once so i get to them as i get to them but they're getting done and the pit too and that's, I got a bunch of wood that I'm going to build with the ducks in the room. And I'm going to build outside with all this wood I got from my neighbor, cedar stuff. So he gave me a bunch. Greenhouse going to get built with the wood the frame. That's one of the next things too. Pond to complete that. Hopefully that holds now with the seal on the plastic. Once I see it holding in the shallow end, the deep end's holding the water like it should be. Because the deep end has a second piece, they're pond liners. I had to join them with the tape and also some silicone stuff that I got to increase the seal. Put a spigot in. I'm thinking too, at some point, building a trellis over the pond and letting like grapes. And it'll provide shade for the pond. Promote probably different interesting types of activity in the growth to be in shaded areas with water you know I'll watch the frogs and all the wildlife I'm gonna get a school of fish in there so I'll have some kind of fish maybe even multiple types at some point next year when the springtime comes rolling around I'll be really focused on that so that's what I want to have it filled up and holding with the spigot in play ready to go to add an aerator and a pump and the waterfall and really build it out this spring coming after the winter here and that's good that's really good the ducks will be fully grown with tons of them by then whichever ones I don't have in the indoor operation my thought big thought everything I'm doing outdoors I want to have an indoor operation of as well manure compost animals food so all that's in here with the rabbits and the food with the lights with the animals as well with the food and the animals with the grow room setups. So the ducks will be in there when I build that out and then downstairs I've got a plan to rebuild an aviary down there. I had one a year ago and it was under a vacuum where it took the air out and pumped it outside and kept it clean that way using a grow tent fan that simply just sucked the air and pushed it in another direction up like a dryer vent type of piping out the window there in the basement and I built that in with plastic and simple wood frame I'm gonna do it again and this time it will be a little simpler I've got a better ideas in mind with all the wood I have now to repurpose 
at how to build it simpler and really, really efficient to have uh, hens down there to lay out eggs. Simple enough. It's that time of year. The animals got this leaf litter bedding. It's beautiful. I'm gonna bunker them, hunker them down with some thick beddings for the winter with the straw and the leaf litter. I'm gonna save a bunch because it's really coming down now and I gotta clean the front yard where the leaves have come down so I'm gonna have all that for them too. The rabbits eat it and they love it and it's a holistic regenerative bedding so you're not paying for uh, unsustainable bedding from the store. This is the rabbit manure operation where I do the sifting and it comes down into here concentrated. And then I can put it in buckets from there and even save whatever hay gets left out of the concentrate and use that as mulch for the gardens. Here is wood my neighbor gave me all for free. There's a bunch up front here with all materials, recycling things. So I don't have to pay inflated prices or that price at all, that expense at all, can get put somewhere else that's critical and vital. Every single little move you can make to save and cut out those expenses, use the materials that are all around us, Craigslist and Facebook, free for all these materials, firewood, you can find all that stuff for free. You don't have to pay brand new prices, in fact if you're not very wealthy or rich, you shouldn't. You need to be thinking of how to save so you can better use that money on smarter projects and vital infrastructure and vital materials to expand and feed. So the resources you need like the hay. A couple different types there from a couple different places. They told me it's clean, no chemicals were used. I'm hoping that that's the case. A bunch more here. Fence for protection, keep the zombies out. And the commies. Got eggshells here. Busting these down for the chickens. Supplement their calcium. This is their shells that I save from my meals. Dump this dirty water. I'll rinse it a few more times even. And break it down further. Then I'll set it in a separate feeder for them where they can come and grab at the chickens at any time they need it. They know when they need it. Find myself doing this every few months, breaking up some more eggshells for them. Regenerative way so you don't pay for oyster shells. Rinsing it a few times, working it, getting as much of the egg membrane out of there, leaving the shell small pieces small as possible. Look at this. It's snowing right now. What's going on here? You're going inside? I don't blame you, my little bubby. I gotta build my bubbies another box. They'll show they have two houses under this deck. Wild out here. All food I've grown. Squash, butternut, potatoes, some russet, orange bell pepper, green bell pepper, red habanero hot pepper potatoes for mashed potatoes. I'm going to pick up 32 Muscovy juveniles, Muscovy, Muscovy ducks, and six drakes, meat birds, as well as a couple free roosters this person has at their farm. They're giving it all to me for a hundred bucks. You believe that? Incredible. Just incredible the value you can get out of a hundred bucks. I'm gonna process the older drakes and keep the juveniles to raise up for processing and well the hens when they're older from the juveniles I'll likely keep those for egg laying. It's gonna be incredible. I'm gonna finish building the guillotine tomorrow as well when I get back and then the day after I want to be able to start harvest. You know what's really annoying? He's dropping a pocket full of zip ties. Three rabbits die the last couple weeks. And I'm thinking it's because they were eating chicken feed and they're not supposed to. I didn't know that until recently. And I stopped that. And then a few of them had died. And there's no reason they should have died other than toxicity 
you know, I, I know it's my fault, but on a certain level, we're not taught, we're not shown any of these things. We should be taught animal husbandry from a very young age with all of these basic homesteading animals, and we're not taught a damn thing. Purposefully not taught. So yeah, it's my fault, and I corrected it when I learned, but our world is upside down. So, now I'm fully dedicated to educating. <laughs> Do you, you know, I'm doing a harvest with the ducks. I'm finishing the guillotine. And I was thinking out there that to do all this and set this up and go through the emotions and the process of it all is a big deal. See, I care for my animals. I love them. I, my energy with them is, is wonderful. I sing to them. I laugh with them. And I cry with them. And when you're not emotionally invested, most people aren't when they eat meat and they don't understand. They just don't understand. Do they deserve it? Well, if you ask me what I think nowadays, I'd say no. Nope. Most people don't deserve it at all. They don't understand those animals. How are they treated when you're buying meat from a store? What are they eating? Is their life like? Do anybody really care about them? So I'll tell you what, I care a lot about these little rabbits that I've had to put down because they got weak. I care a lot. Down here is my basement, and in here is a room I have stocked with preps. I got some stuff. These are my nuts squirreled away for winter, you know, like the squirrels do. I'm going to bring down the three hutches in the kitchen grow room. I'm going to clear that area up, and I'm going to put one big plant in there under the light. So that'll be cool, and then I'll have the main of the indoor rabbit operations will be here downstairs, and it'll be... A nice place to do it down here heavy bag in here is this room where I have my roosters that were upstairs now they're down here so they're in here eating enjoying that clean water I just gave them I'm moving these pots of potatoes look at these potato pots 10 gallon pots fabric pots the plastic pot tomato cages to hold the potato as it grows so you see over here this one here maybe a russet it may be a red it may be a gold three different types the soil base I've been making and mending over years every time something's done growing I recycle the soil by mixing at least two pots together and that mixes up the biome and I add to it with manure soon to be compost fresh from the compost piles to all my fabric pots and all my indoor growing building my soil adding more over time giving me more soil you know I noticed when I was doing starts in the little cups that the plant as the root system grows it eats the dirt quite literally because the root ball took over the entire cup and there was no dirt even left in the cup that just speaks to what plants really are doing with <laughs> the uh, nutrition they're literally taking the soil and all the things in it and that's what the plant is made up of and it's really um, special it was a little bit profound and special to see and have that realization in that moment like hey it's alive living and then it makes up the food that goes into your gut and your gut is living the gut is its whole little universe in itself here is my processing station where i'm building a wooden roof and then i'll put a tarp over top of it it was just a tarp on this frame here but i need more support for the winter to hold the weight of the snow so I can work under here without getting hit by snow or rain. Here you see 
This is the guillotine for the duck. Over here, I got to go ahead and fix this rabbit guillotine. It broke. You see this piece here where it slid through the channel. Been organizing and getting a lot done up here. This is a main center of operations. So it's got to be put together well. And in the next week, it will all be tightened up completely ready for winter and all the harvests that are going to come in the winter. Here are boards I got from my neighbor. This wood I got here stacked on this metal structure. It's got some wheels on it. My neighbor gave me that, my other neighbor. And I'm going to use this wood, cut it down to the sizes and shapes I need it for building the greenhouse frame, which I'll then put the plastic on. And that'll be this project going into the winter. I want to have that built and wrapped up by the time the snow sticks. Getting this done, I've got a ton of animals, like 140. I got a, a bunch of birds from a lady for 100 bucks. And uh, yeah, amazing deal. The value is just unbelievable. You see them right there? Two of them hanging out in the window. I'm about to open up the back section of this run here for them. So I gotta get in there and fence it off with some chicken wire material. And then uh, I'm going to open up where they're at now in here they're over here i built this boxed area and they're real tight in here you see all them these are the new ones that i just got from the lady for a hundred bucks isn't that amazing i think that's just absolutely incredible harvest them and supplementing the dog's food for the winter now our ancestors on the farm on the homestead they had dogs, but they didn't have dog food. They didn't have, you know, Pet Supplies Plus to get this processed, unhealthy stuff to put in their dogs. They fed them animals from the farm. The scraps, the carcass, all the foods from the farm, the, uh, the flesh of your enemies. <laughs> what I'd like to get back to, without the flesh of my enemies, that part we can leave out, but feeding them the animals that I grow any scraps and materials all that I have four dogs so it's a big task but as much as I can get for them and supplement them out of eating dog food that's where I'm going with this the guillotine this is where the ducks are gonna get ready for process his head will pop up out of two boards that latch closed set up on hinges and then it will latch shut so that the neck will be popping out exposed and there'll be a flat surface for me to slide the blade across with the duck facing forward less trauma and a very efficient quick humane way so I don't have to get down and on mounting a duck and cutting its neck that way that's traditional method compost this is getting built more and more over time it's looking really good some of this stuff back here are the oldest two piles I'm throwing things from the grow room just now close the rabbits tunnel for now it's going to sit that way, likely for the winter. It'll give all of this area where they graze time to heal. Also, I have a peach tree here, and the leaves and the branches are toxic to the rabbits. I put a dividing chicken wire right here to block them from going in there, but still the leaves will fall over and they will eat them, and I don't want that at all. So I'm putting a stop to that immediately now by blocking the entrance to the tunnel which I put a cap and back filled it with soil I'll open it again in the spring let them run around out there over here my new bunch of Muscovies and I'm getting ready to put a pool in for them where I have the other one up here with my original bunch of Muscovies now that I have like 60 of them <laughs> This old busted bin that I used once for roaches. You see the screen there for the air hole for the bugs? And I'm marking it at 8 inches. I'm cutting it. It's cracked. Here, there's even a drill hole right here at 8 inches. And it's cracked here at 8 inches. So when I take my angle grinder to it and cut it real nice and straight around, I'll be able to repurpose this as a really nice little pool. The guillotine. I've got these boards. Now I've got to make cuts and hook up the hardware. So there will be boards like this hooked up on hinges and 
it will sit parallel two of them with a hole cut here that will be for the neck and they'll open and then they'll close this is the sword I sharpened the sword I'm gonna hold this tight the hole is cut it is hooked on hinges secure put extra support to hold this steady it's a nice table it's really really custom the latch here to hold it once it's shut like that hinge over here a little nerve-wracking the first time wielding a sword like that you do it and I'm gonna get ready now with the water in the pot and the fire and heat that up clean this area up a little bit and then get ready to do the process 150 degrees Fahrenheit scolding water for two minutes the feathers you got to work the feathers a lot more than chickens and then they should pull off and do the process as you would a chicken from there Look who we found. Look at him. Look at that little guy, Stuart Little. Whoa, where you going, buddy? He probably came from the wall. Yeah, you want to go back in the walls? You know, do, do you want to go back into the rafters? Where'd you come from? He came in and jumped in here. This was the feed bucket from down in the chicken's uh, grow tent. And he found his way in there. So he popped out of the ceiling tiles or something. That's my guess. Dropped in for a visit and got himself a snack and now I'm thinking what can I do do I just put him back in the wall do I put him back in <laughs> do I just lift the ceiling tile in the basement and just slide him back in there I mean it's probably his best bet I don't mind I never noticed him before hey Dilbert should I call you Stuart Stuart Little yeah perhaps perhaps <laughs> You ready to go back in the wall, buddy? Watch this. I don't want to freak him out or nothing too hard. Bro. What do you think about that, Emmy? What do you think? Dilbert. Stuart. Sir. Are you a sir? Sir. I'm gonna go put you back in the wall. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna go put you back in the wall now. I'm in the pond, working on the seam. Here, big old patch in the corner down here. I'll be back to fill it.